after watching this video you will literally pray that your opponent do play the modern scandinavian defense why well the reason is very obvious not only i'm going to show you one of the most trickiest line against it but even though let's say your opponent doesn't fall for the tricks and traps white get an opening advantage in almost all the lines whereupon black is really suffering After e4 and d5, the modern Scandinavian rises after e captures d5 and rather than capturing back with the queen, black plays the move knight to f6. Here white has tried many responses, but I am going to recommend this Fisher's move, bishop to b5 check. Well, the first thing first, if black continue with knight b to d7, then after c4, I think white is holding on to his extra pawn and I don't see a clear compensation in this line. So that is why as per the database, bishop to d7 has been exclusively played here. And after this, white's big point is he wants to hang on to this extra pawn by playing bishop to c4. Okay, now we are at very important junction where black has tried majority two of these moves and let's see each by turn and see white's some amazing replies the first move b5 roughly played in more than 10,000 lee chess games and the point is very obvious after bishop to b3 black wants to play a5 grab every single space on the queen side and if allowed, then he is really looking for to trap down this bishop by playing a4. Okay, once again, white has few choices. But amongst them, my recommendation is very simple. You play the move a4 so that if blacks block it with b4, then we are more than happy to hold on to this extra pawn. But nope, again, if you look at the database, by far, the most popular choice is b captures a4 where idea is very obvious if you take this pawn then after knight captures d5 black is regaining the pawn and comfortably equalize the game well here comes the movement guys fasten up your seat belt as i'm about to show you a nasty exchange sack yup rook captures a4 <laughs> and I think with the help of modern chess engine, you can find out such a sacrifices which are not only really strong, but black has to play very accurately to even avoid the early defeat. For example, black is forced to capture this rook, otherwise he will get some fracture pawn on the queen side with a clear pawn down situation. So what else? Bishop captures a4 and after bishop captures a4, knight b to d7, white has a very silent but the killer move, knight to f3 and the idea is very obvious, pressurize the d7 knight. Well, accordingly black has two major choices. Number one, knight captures d5, highestly played here but in fact, it's a big time blunder as after knight to e5, black has two ways to defend his d7 knight, but unfortunately, both of them fails. Let's see each by turn. So the number one, if you think that knight b6 looks so good, nope, it's a worst move as after just one move, queen to f3 and suddenly, black is completely losing the game there is a mate on f7 hanging and the only way to defend this is by playing the move f6 but now yup you guessed it queen check g6 knight captures g6 kindly note black cannot take this knight because queen captures g6 is a checkmate so 
as per the engine, the base move is queen to b8. But after this, very simple continuation. Knight captures rook, discover check, king to d8. And finally, when white save his bishop, if you count the material, just at the 15th move of the game, white is a pawn and a whole bishop up. Isn't that amazing? Okay, some of you may say, hang on, I can play knight to f6 so that I can neutralize the attack on f7, right? Well, yep, you can, except nope, it doesn't solve the problem as white indeed continue with queen to f3. Whereupon, his idea is very simple. He want to take on d7 and then take the rook, which is again gives white a completely winning edge. For example, if black is foolish enough to move the rook somewhere, then we have this bishop captures d7, whereupon black is completely losing as he cannot recapture with the knight. And the only move queen captures d7 leads to loss of the queen. So nope, that rook cannot move. The base sequence black can play over here is c6. But even after this, bishop captures c6, rook to a7. If any time white wish, he can take on d7 and get the exchange. But I think the stronger move here is knight to c3, where white has a simple plan. He wants to play knight to b5 and get this poor guy. Well, one of the game from the database finished very quickly. Black plays the move e6. White indeed play knight to b5. And since this rook now cannot move, black continue with queen to b8, attacking on the e5 knight. But here, white played a very accurate move, namely d4. And after bishop to d6, this simple transaction, knight takes rook, queen takes. Now you take on d7 with a check. And black is clearly pieced down here because if he foolishly take this bishop, then after queen check, king to d8 and knight to c6, black sweetie disappear from the board. So these are some of the wonderful high profile tricks and traps if your opponent continue with knight captures d5. Well, the second most popular choice here is g6. But even after this, black cannot stop white's onslaught with knight to e5. And after bishop to g7, the lovely move knight to c6 decide the game. Black queen has been attacked. She has only one square to go. And then what else? This nice attacking queen E to move, which I'm afraid completely bamboozled black cap. Nope, black cannot castle due to this simple fork. So that is right out of the equation. If you think knight captures d5 walk here, well, guess what? Just one move, c4, and black cannot move the knight in order to protect the checkmate. So last but not least, the only move here is bishop to f8, protecting the mate. Whereupon, although white has many good options, I think knight to c3 is a fitting reply, which highlight how pathetically black has been placed, as none of his king side as well as queen side pieces can move, whereupon white has all the time in the world to castle put the rook on e-file, and then generate a big time attack. All in all, if you put this position in any chess engine, it clearly indicates that black should already resign this game.
Okay, so let's move on to the most popular choice, namely Bishop to g4, played in more than 18,000 Lee chess games. Whereupon Black's idea is very simple. If you defend the attack on the queen by knight moves, then the d5 pawn drop. So white response is forced here. You have to play f3. Whereupon by far the most popular choice is bishop to f5, trying to get the pawn back. Okay, we need to protect it by playing knight to c3. And now black's big idea is he wants to play knight b to d7 so that this knight is rerouting to the b6 square whereupon at the end black is trying to get his pawn back with a good position. And yes indeed at first sight this looks cool except one problem that white has this very aggressive reply g4 attacking the bishop. If knight to b6 then b3 is a very strong reply and I have attached a model fide game in the PGN. But once again if you look at the database here the majority of the games continue with bishop to g6 whereupon white can really trick black by playing next amazing move. Can you guess it? Congratulations if you see the move f4. <laughs> so white's idea is very innocent. He wants to play f5 and take down this bishop. Accordingly, black has tried three responses, but I don't think so. Neither of them are walking here. For example, the first move I want to consider is h5, a big mistake, as now white pawn ruler literally killed the black. First f5, attacking the bishop, bishop to h7. Now you play g5. If black played any knight moves, then the h5 pawn drop. For example, if knight to b6, attacking our bishop, we can deliver this check so that after knight f to d7, finally we can munch on h5 and obtain a two pawn advantage. So that's not a good choice for the black. And by far, most frequent choice is knight to g4, which I'm afraid completely fails due to the following lovely move by white. d4, look at this, closing all doors for this black knight so that in the next move, we are going to lash out with h3 and trap this knight. For example, bishop takes f5, h3, and you can walk it out by yourself. This knight is not going anywhere. The second move, which is in fact the most popular choice on the Lee chess, that is bishop to e4, completely fails due to the following easy sequence. Knight captures e4. Knight captures e4. Now you attack this knight with queen to e2. And when black plays the move knight to d6, counter attacking our bishop, we can simply respond with b3. So in all these lines, not only white hold on to his extra pawn, but his superior piece development can create some huge problems for the black camp. For example, one of my recent games where my opponent is nearly 2200, finished very quickly. He played knight to b6 here. I responded with knight to f3. And after knight takes, pawn takes, black clearly realized that if he plays the move e6 or c6, then his position fallen apart. So in the game, he continued with one of the most natural choice, g6. But to his horror, he find out that after bishop to b2, black is forced to move the rook as if he plays f6, then bishop takes f6, lose another pawn. 
So root 2 g8, what else? Now I continue with c5, which forces another black piece to go back. And finally, the insult to the injury, queen to b5 check, not only wins another pawn, but look at the center white is obtaining. And don't forget, black is going to lose one of his pieces. So this 17 move miniature highlight how difficult black position can become if he continue with routine move, bishop to e4. Finally, what happens if your opponent continue with h6? Well, this is so easy. First, you indeed play f5 and after bishop to h7, the nice move d4 confirms white extra pawn advantage as well as space in the center. Here black can respond with the various way but the big factor you have to remember is this light skirt bishop will always remain a passive creature. Let's see a game to understand what is the planning of campaign from the white side. We are following a game between two grandmasters where black continue with a6. So his idea is to play knight to b6 and then munch on the d5 pawn. So white support the d5 pawn with queen to f3 and after knight to b6, bishop to b3, black choose the typical Scandinavian route namely queen to d7 and planning to castle lock. Okay, white plays knight to e2, allowing black to castle so that he can play knight to f4. And I think here you can realize how problematic this position is for the black as he would love to play the move c6 or e6, but in fact both leads to a catastrophic mistake. No wonder any black player will be frustrated from this position and in the game he indeed lash out with g5. But after knight to d3, that knight is looking for some juicy squares. And in fact, after bishop to g7, knight to e5, queen to e8, white just consolidate his position with bishop to e3 and castle on the queen side. Whereupon, after knight f to d7, the tactical blow happen on the board. d6. So by force, black has to remove the knight. But the end result is, after pawn capture c7 check, king takes, pawn takes e5. Black was happy to exchange some pieces, thinking that his position will become better. But nope. Just look at white center completely dominating this bad bishops. And I'm not sure here that black was in time trouble or not because in the game he made this horrible mistake here. Bishop captures e5 whereupon he lose the piece immediately with bishop captures b6, king captures b6 and queen to e3 check where end result is Black King is dancing on the highway and his pieces are completely sleeping. That's it guys. I hope with this many lecture, now you are confident enough to meet the modern Scandinavian. Remember at this point, it doesn't matter whether your opponent continue with b5 or bishop to g4 against both these lines as i have shown in this video you can deliver some nasty surprises whereupon if black is not careful then the game can be finished just within the opening stage thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment and i will meet you in my next episode very soon Bye and take care.